Ionized fuel is a brand new fuel type that was added into Satisfactory at 1.0. On paper, it is the best fuel type in the game, since it burns 6 times slower than regular fuel, and even 2.5 times slower than turbo fuel. In theory, this thing is absolutely amazing. However, it might not be. This is the reason why. One of the things that you need is something called rocket fuel, which is also brand new in update 1.0 and can be found in the blender. There's two ways that you can create this rocket fuel. The first one involves turbo fuel and nitric acid, which might sound quite difficult to make, but don't worry, it's essentially just nitrogen, water, and an iron plate. From this, you can then produce your rocket fuel and compact coal, which if you're using the basic turbo fuel recipe, is actually used to make the turbo fuel. So you can actually recycle the compact coal back into your turbo fuel recipe, which is really efficient. As you can see, this is what I've done here. When we create the rocket fuel, we get 10 compact coal as a byproduct. From this, I then re-add it back into here, which then saves me on compact coal, which is fantastic. And of course, saving on compact coal means that I save on coal and sulfur, which is rather important. And here's a very quick look at nitric acid. Luckily, it only requires, again, water, nitrogen gas, and iron ore. You could use the water refinery recipe if you so wish. In case you didn't know, you can go into the refinery, type in the word pure, and essentially click on any of these things right here. And to make 162.5 iron ingots, you don't need 162.5 iron ore like what you'd need in the smelter. Instead, you get significantly less resources being used, but it requires water. Bear in mind that the refinery also takes extra power and it's much bigger than a regular smelter or constructor. You can also do this for concrete where you can save a bunch of limestone and make a good amount of concrete. As well as copper sheets where again you can save a bunch of copper. As well as quartz crystals as well. So overall nitric acid isn't a problem. And as we've previously discussed, turbo fuel is not a problem either. Because we're using our diluted fuel recipes and residual fuel over here as well. Which saves us on a bunch of crude oil. And because we're reusing the compact coal, coal isn't a problem, and sulfur isn't a problem. So what exactly is the problem with ionized fuel for me to make an entire video talking about it and to warn you guys of potentially not using it? Well, that's to do with the second item used to make it. Synthetic power shards. And the problem isn't the amount that you're making, it's what's used to make it that's the real problem. As of right now on the channel, I have got tons of tutorials and guides, so make sure you are subscribed if you find things like this interesting. It massively supports the channel. Thank you very much, and back to the video. Firstly, you need excited photonic matter. This is made in the converter, which you can only unlock in phase 5 or tier 9 of the hub. So it's a very, very late game item. The good news, however, though, if you actually type in excited photonic matter, you can see it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. The only thing it costs you is power, but it does eventually make it, which does take some time, but it does indeed produce the excitophotonic matter, which is not too bad. It just costs you a lot of power. So we've already established that to make the synthetic power shards, you have to have tier 9 unlocked, which means you can't even make ionized fuel until you've almost finished the game anyway, unlike, for example, rocket fuel or turbo fuel, which you can make well earlier on. Second item you need is quartz crystals. I mean, this is not too bad. Third and fourth items needed all involve time crystals. To make these time crystals, you need diamonds. And to make diamonds, you need quite a lot of coal. Again, we're only making 37.5 diamonds here and we're using three quarters of a thousand coal per minute, which is a lot. If you wish to try and save on coal, click on this video on the screen. It shows you the best diamond recipes in Satisfactory 1.0. Additionally, with diamonds, it's not made in the constructor like you might think. Instead, it's made in the particle accelerator. So if you're trying to make a lot of these things, for example, if I just search diamonds, and these are all the alt recipes, by the way. <laughs> if you're trying to make a lot of these things, the power consumption is going to be ridiculous, and again, you need quite a lot of core, unless you choose an alt recipe. Time crystals are also made in the converter, which, like previously mentioned, also uses a lot of power. Time crystals then split. 12.5 of them are then used to make the synthetic power shards, whereas 6.25 of them are used to make dark matter crystals. This thing also requires dark matter residue which can be made in the converter, which, yet again, requires tons of power, and is a late-game item. 
or it can be made as a byproduct in the quantum encoder, which, have a guess, yes, requires a lot of power. Like, look at that, holy crap. So again, the dark matter residue and the time crystals then combine to form the dark matter crystals which yet again is also made in the particle accelerator. And eventually when you add all four of these, you can then make the synthetic power shards, which is also made in the quantum encoder. So in total, we've got one converter being used over here, potentially a few refineries being used if you're making this version of the quartz crystals. We need a particle accelerator to make the diamonds. We then need converters to make time crystals, another particle accelerator to make this, we then need the quantum encoder to make the dark matter residue and another quantum encoder to make the synthetic power shards. All of this will be consuming thousands of megawatts of power just to make 6.25 synthetic power shards. So not only is this consuming a ton of power as we've just discussed and I've proven throughout this short video, but also the items needed to make it can only be unlocked in tier 9 or phase 5 of the game where you've, pretty much, almost finished the game in its entirety. Whereas these other things I've just shown you with rocket fuel, turbo fuel, and of course, basic fuel, can be unlocked well earlier into the game and doesn't require anything stupid to make. So the question is, is ionized fuel even worth it? My honest answer is, not really. When I lay everything out nice and neatly like this, it looks relatively simple. Let me tell you now, it won't be. For example, this is the recipe I'm using to create my starter turbo fuel factory. Everything in green is what I've already done, everything in white is what I need to do. Apparently everything in green has taken me about two weeks to do, but look how small and compact and easy to understand it looks on here, whilst in reality it's not. So don't make that mistake when you see the way I've laid this out. The reason I've done this is because it looks a lot neater and it just looks easier to understand as well for my sake, and also for yours, potentially. So I might not recommend ionized fuel. However, what I do recommend making is rocket fuel. You might think that nitrogen gas might be a problem, but there is a workaround. And guess what machine that involves? That's right, it's the converter again. That's because you can make nitrogen gas in the converter using either caterium or bauxite, which might sound quite expensive, but you can make bauxite from copper and there is a ton of copper lying around. Not to mention, if you choose this caterium recipe, you can then also make caterium from copper as well. And for anyone wondering, the ratio from copper to bauxite to copper to caterium is roughly the same, but you want to try and convert it into nitrogen gas. So, to conclude, turbo fuel, absolutely make it if you can. Rocket fuel, again, absolutely make it if you can, and don't worry too much about nitrogen gas. Ionized fuel, I don't particularly recommend it because of this, and especially because it's late game and it consumes a bunch of power. The burn rate from rocket fuel compared to ionized fuel isn't really that far off, it's like 1.167 per minute, which is nothing crazy considering everything that you have to add on to rocket fuel to make the ionized fuel. I think you're fine just to make this. However, that is my conclusion. Remember, I'm just a random bloke on the internet. If you would like to make ionized fuel, go ahead. If you don't want to make it, you don't have to. I'm just throwing in my two cents onto the situation to try and give you guys a further insight on whether or not it's, you know, worth making. Regardless, thank you very much for watching. Before we go, a massive thank you to our members, Mau Mau, Skull and Hattie, Lo, Natormal, Chaos Rising, Cutthroat Zoo, Yamikel, and Tio Rico.